Let's get more on this. It's been such an interesting campaign. Edie Lush joins me now, who's executive editor of Hub Culture and a US commentator based here in London. Edie, thank you. It, you we've been watching this all night. I know, it's been amazing, <laughs> it's hasn't been it? It's been fantastic. Who was your money on? It's really interesting. I think a couple months ago, there was no question that Obama was going to win. And then suddenly we had that debate when it all started to crumble and Obama himself admitted that he didn't really even show up to the debate. And I think that's when things really started to get quite tense for, for, for the Democratic Party. And in a way, it may have been the moment that they needed to actually galvanize everyone to come together and, and get Obama reelected. I think in the last couple of days, I've been speaking to my friends in the States who have been very, very nervous. In fact, everybody has been saying it's very close, it's too close to call, really close, the popular vote, as we've been talking about, the popular vote versus the electoral, or electoral college, those two issues could come into play. And they did tonight. You should have an answer to the question, who was your money on? <laughs> I have to say, I expected Obama to be re-elected. A couple days ago, I thought, hmm, wonder if I'm going to be wrong on that. Mm. You know, it's interesting, we looked at the turnout figures, and they're, they're slightly lower. They are lower than 2008, and I think, actually, turnout is substantially, is substantially lower even than 2004. And the reason we bring this up is, in 2008, there was a huge rush to the polls, obviously, mm. to elect as many wanted the first black president of the United States. You just wonder if there's voter apathy now. There's certainly been election f fatigue, hasn't yeah. there? There's certainly election fatigue in, in some of the states like Florida, like Nevada, where they've had nothing but non-stop calls, people knocking on their doors, uh, campaign ads, you know, millions of dollars spent in campaign ads on this campaign. So there's a, people are definitely ready for this thing to be, to be over, absolutely. Um, and let's talk about the actual system. Now, the Electoral College system, there was always this idea that Mitt Romney would get the popular vote, so the vote of the population, but then there's the Electoral College system. Just explain that and why that would have gone President Obama's way. So it goes back to the Constitutional Convention, I think, in 1787. It's quite a long time History ago. History lesson for <laughs> exactly. us Exactly. <now. laughs> but the idea is that you want to take power away from just the, the most populous states. So, you know, it goes into the whole voting system, the fact that we have a House of Representatives and a Senate. The, the issue is um, the Electoral College gives some of the power back to the states. So there's 50 states in the United States. It gives some of the power back to them rather than just the states that have uh, the most amount of people in them. And that's how you get this Electoral College, which has a different, can have a different outcome than the popular vote. And that was what was surprising. The popular vote, very evenly balanced. I think actually mm. Obama's edged it. I mean, we've only got about 82% of the precincts in, but actually edged it on the popular vote, and this wasn't expected, was it? And there were a lot of, if you think, if you look at the swing counties, you know, if you go down to the swing counties in Florida, in Ohio, a lot of it was just actually getting people out to vote, so those, those people who were knocking on the doors, the, those campaign ads that kept on coming through, eventually did make a decision. But I think it's interesting, if you go back to what you asked about what's different this time mm. around, I mean, it was such a different feeling four years ago, wasn't it? I mean, this was a period well, was a feeling of massive of hope, change. Wasn't there? Hope was yeah. the word four years ago, and it's yeah. almost apathy, um, a complete lack of hope, and perhaps not even much vision for the future offered by either candidate. And I think you have to take into account that it's not just the presidency that matters here, but the fact that today we have pretty much the same system or same sort of situation that we did yesterday. So the same situation in the House and the Senate. We still have we had the filibustering that happened in the House of Representatives. A lot of bills haven't come through. We have the U.S. on the edge of a fiscal cliff. What's going to happen? Is it going to turn back into recession? I think people feel that that's... Well, this has been Incredibly addressed a irritating. little bit, actually, because um, I'm just looking back at when uh, Mitt Romney gave his speech. He did say that now we can't afford political posturing. The parties need to work together. Obama said in his speech that he's going to make a concerted effort to sit down with Mitt Romney to find out how to push things forward. Because I think, actually, perhaps, and you correct me if I'm wrong, the electorate's sick of seeing these bills being pushed through mm. and then chunks just being taken out and nothing actually being done either to help the economy, be it help the economy or health care. I think that's the great hope and I think that at least with the fiscal bill the issue is that um, if nothing is passed by the House by January then we'll, we will see these giant rises in taxes, we'll see huge cuts in spending and I think many people agree that perhaps that isn't the right thing to happen. However, 
I have heard this exact statement said before, it's time to reach across the aisle, you know, Republicans, Democrats, red to blue. It's time to actually make friends again and, and take this country on a better path. We did hear that exactly a few years ago. Mm. Well, we can only keep our fingers crossed that change does happen. Edie, thank you so much for giving me your thoughts and following this all evening. Edie, Pleasure.